Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode and we're going to be talking about taking action to support industry. And I'm so excited to have with us Mr. Tim Wilburn. And he is at TW Controls and actually we call him the Industrial Sorcerer. So we'll talk to Tim about that title here in a minute. But welcome, Tim. How you doing, man? Doing great, Chris. Happy to be here. Oh, we're very, very excited to have you, have you with us. And, you know, you... Uh, just for our listeners to know you reached out to me i guess you you found the show and you were getting some value out of it and then when i saw what you were doing it's like oh wow we got to get together man absolutely absolutely for sure so i'm so excited to, to talk with you today and uh, maybe to, to get us started explain to the listeners out there the mission behind what you're building because you're really trying to educate a lot of people and get them interested in this exciting industry that we're in we're looking to build the next generation of technicians for our industry and to instill confidence in existing technicians that may not realize that they can do that they have more capabilities than they realize okay so you're, you're really focusing on the, the technician end themselves, the people that are actually working on the equipment. Yes, the people that are going to support it once it's installed and everybody who designed it and built it have walked away. Right, right. Now, I noticed just by, by going to your YouTube channel and, and seeing some things you're doing, I, I was scrolling down. It looked like about two years ago. That's when the content started rolling in, and man, it was rolling in big time. Now you got almost, from my count, 300 videos. You have 23,000 followers. You got an Instagram. Every time I turn on Instagram, you're dropping some cool new video trying to help people do something. You know, what sparked it all? Well, yeah, you know, that, that's an interesting question because really, actually, about three years ago, I got burnt out on YouTube, and I really lost sight of the goal or why, why I was actually doing this. And for almost a year, we didn't put out any videos and every year, Amber and I really measure, you know, what are we doing? What's working? What do we need to just get rid of? And we almost deleted our YouTube channel. Uh, it, it wasn't working. Uh, it was, I, I, I had taken a negative turn towards it. And really I forgot that I was there to help people get into our industry. And I, I had actually turned off all the comments where I didn't have to see them anymore or any of that. And so really I was reviewing it and, you know, looking how, how are people using this? And I found one guy, actually, when you Googled me, he came up to the top and he was using one of my videos and he said, you know, that I was no longer doing this, but for 39 95 a month that he would take my place. And I'm like, no, that was not, the way this was ever supposed to be. Uh, so I started reading through the comments and realized that I had missed so many opportunities to help people. Mm -hmm. And I started, I, I made the 44 questions about PLC's video, which really I just gathered those questions and said, okay, let's, let's try to answer these questions and just see if we can get the ball rolling again. And out of that, a guy, I believe his name was Andrew. I mean, asked probably the most popular question we get is, hey, I'm an electrician and I'm trying to get into PLC programming. You know, how can, what are steps I can do to do it? And so I did the how to get a job program in PLCs and kind of the cogs started turning again. And I started getting focus again on, hey, we're here not to sell products, there's no agenda except to, except for to help people. And so ever since then, every video we have done has been because of a user's question. That is awesome. That is awesome. And the focus on helping people, you know, there's a book out there, Tim, called Utility. And I'm not sure if you've read it, but it's, it's a, I, I just finished reading it for about the third time because I'm trying to find ways to help people there too. And it's, it's exactly what you're doing. It's, it's creating information that helps people get better. And there's no, really no end game, you know, it's, it, other than all of a sudden now you're the expert in a lot of these areas because people are trusting you and you're building that trust and, and you're helping in an area that, of industry that definitely needs it, man. So hats off to you. That, that's good oh. stuff. Now, when you started looking at those videos and, and you started looking at that feedback, 
what's been some of the most impactful comments or feedback that's come back to you that's helped drive where you want to take new you know topics in the future probably the most impactful feedback that i got actually wasn't in a youtube video it was before youtube was really a big thing before then a, a lot of us were in the control forums and especially early on well i started you know dabbling in the control forums because i was new and i I'd ask a question about a project that I had and, you know, I would get some feedback, but then I also started trying to answer other people's questions and even, okay, we got 10 different answers. Was mine the best or was it, you know, where was it on the scale? And probably at that point in time, my answers were probably 80% accurate. Um, but I got, I got a guy who messaged me one day and said, thanks for a recent answer I had given him and that, he read every single one of my posts and he practiced what I said and tried to replicate it and really appreciated it. And it was the first time that all of a sudden I realized I really need to watch the way I act on these forums or now on YouTube. And really I need to make sure that, you know, I'm giving the best information. And so, yeah, that was probably, I mean, it was a small message. Right. But it was probably one of the biggest turning points that really kind of set me down this path. Excuse me. That really set me down this path. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how, how many uh, comments and feedbacks are you seeing on, on a regular basis now? Because, I mean, I'm sure with your subscribers, it's probably flooding in with, with, with information and, and, you know, from the, your viewers and, and what they like and what they're hoping to see next. Uh, that's one of the biggest challenges actually on a peak day we'll get 900 emails comments questions and yeah it's becoming the point that it's really difficult to address them all yeah that's amazing that's amazing so on those peak days when you're you're taking this training to a new level you know what who's who's coming to you is it the people in the plants themselves or is it people in uh maybe younger generation that, that are looking to do some training and figure out where they want to go for college where, where, where are you serving right now well as far as the questions that we are asked uh, there's two groups we mainly it will be maintenance technicians mm -hmm. you know electricians maybe mechanical guys um, people who are right on the fringes of automation, they're having to run into it. They're kind of butting heads with it. And they're like, man, I've really got to learn to navigate this better to, you know, do better at my job. So that would be the one. And that's probably my, my favorite, not that I don't enjoy the second group, but the second group is actually schools, mostly technical colleges looking to figure out how to do the best training they can for the technicians. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Well, that's great. I mean, hats off to you. And, and speaking of schools, I know when you and I were talking, you mentioned uh, the You Make It Challenge, and that, that was a very big, impactful thing for you. So maybe explain that to our listeners who may not understand what that is and, 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 and why you're so passionate about it. Oh, well, that um, now we could probably spend a whole podcast on that. Uh, so the You Make It Challenge was put out by Rockwell Automation. It wasn't something we did. Um, and here's where... <laughs> You always have to watch how you challenge your children. But I do, I look for things like that just to kind of stretch them a little bit. And I believe that was in July or August. The so school was about ready to start. And so I told my kids, you've got to submit something to this. So the general gist of it was Rockwell Automation said, find something that you feel is wrong in the world and come up with an idea on how to solve it. And so my son and daughter both submitted entries and really I thought that was the end of it. <laughs> and a few weeks later, we got an email that said, your child has been selected as a top 10 finalist, which was really challenging because obviously we had two entries into it and we we're like, okay, which child was this? <laughs> right. So it ended up being my son, Michael and, uh, uh, my daughter, she, um, after being upset for about 20 minutes and swearing she was going to sabotage him in every way possible, she did get behind him on this. Right. But he came up with an idea of how to improve sanitation in developing countries. And that's something Amber and I do. We work uh, on the side uh, in drinking water and sanitation and general health care in developing countries. 
And so he came up with this idea and the top 10 finalists, it was all put to a vote uh, online. And the top three got flown to Automation Fair in Chicago to present at Perspectives. Okay. Now, Chris, I don't know if you are aware, Perspectives is like where the top people of our industry come to hear about what all is going on. So one, we had all of Rockwell Automation's top executives, but you also have executives from the big industries there. Mm -hmm. So Michael ended up in the top three. He presented there in front of 400 of probably the biggest people in our industry. And, and yeah, that was just an amazing experience for him. Uh, for me as a father, I mean, just overall, I can't, I will never be able to thank Rockwell enough for what it did to him and to us. And, you know, kind of to loop that back around, I think I really felt after that, you know, I, I need to figure out how to do that mm -hmm. to the next generation. We have some ideas that we're working on that we're going to engage with high schoolers. We're going to engage with middle schoolers because maybe I can't put on the You Make It Challenge, mm -hmm. but I can do my part locally to bring kids into our industry, or mainly I'll call it more planting seeds yes. in yes. our industry that hopefully will flourish maybe in six years, maybe in 10 years. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're planting those seeds at that right level because, I mean, we've talked to several people who are really focused on that technician, the college level, you know, those types of programs, even uh, a program for, for military to, to manufacturing and trying to help them transition. But the piece that's, you know, I haven't heard many talk about it since encouraging to hear you talk about is that middle school, high school STEM focus, you know, because that is, uh, that's where you can really generate a lot of interest and maybe find that next uh, set of engineers out there that that uh, are passionate about about you know STEM and want to get into the industry and take it to the next level. No, yes. you're you're trying. You, we, we've kind of talked about it a little bit, but you're you're being very intentional. I noticed on a lot of your videos that you're coming out, you kind of pick topics and you dig deep in them. So prioritizing those topics, I'm sure it can be hard because there's only so much bandwidth in a day to create so many videos. So how do you walk through that? Because you're really trying to support industry at a high level. Just curious on your thought process of that pro of, of priority. We usually focus on the more basic topics. So, you know, we get a lot of requests for, I don't know, let's say how to do vision systems and how to do augmented reality and all these things. But while those things are important to our industry, I think our focus is really on understanding the basics. In other words, when a technician walks up, he's going to say, okay, my motor is not running. And how can I help him trace that motor back to the contactor and realize that contactor is not coming in and trace it to the PLC and then follow the logic enough that he can find out that his gate switch is bad. Mm -hmm. And that, so that's kind of more of our focus is those low tech. Well, I don't know that I want to call it low tech, but those more basic principles that are probably behind even all the high tech things that we're seeing. No doubt it is. I mean, the whole IOT and 4.0 and smart manufacturing, none of that ha happens if you don't get the, the basic blocking and tackling down. And I think that's the piece that from what we've seen with manufacturing in particular with the infrastructure as old as it is, the aging workforce, that's the gap. So, I mean, it's, you know, that's, I think you're all over it. Now, you've got, what, 300 videos or so out right now? Probably so. Okay. So, you're not uh, you're not shy behind a camera. You obviously you've got you've, you've you've got it figured out. But you know, for for the listeners out there who want to start creating content or or making videos to help on the topics they're in, maybe it's an engineering topic. What have been some of the learning curves that you've had to so, along creating some of this content? You know, I think the biggest issue that I, I I still have today is probably dealing with negative comments. And what I would I would say to them is, you know, there is constructive negative criticism, but it is rare. <laughs> Usually the negative comments you are getting in no way can help you. So try not to get stuck on this. And really, whatever platform you're doing, just hit the record button and throw something out. And yes, it won't be perfect, but 
it's a start and then do it again and just try to learn and do better. And the one thing I would probably say to you, Chris, and to me, actually, this is how we ended up um, in this podcast, is if you see someone who is doing something, and okay, maybe it's not even perfect, if they're doing something and you know it's helpful, then reach out to them and tell them, hey, you're doing a great job. Don't say you're doing great, but here are some suggestions, or don't say you're doing great, how about you try our products? Just tell someone that they're doing a great job. And I think there's enough room out there. There's enough need out there that none of us should be considered competition. I mean, that's why I reached out to you, Chris, is you're doing a great thing. And we're, they're, they're complimentary to each other. I don't think there's any of us that are really butting heads on this. You're exactly right. And I noticed you and I, we both are uh, have mutual connections with Chris Lukey and Manufacturing Happy Hour and things that he's doing there and i mean we support that 100 percent and been on been honored to be on that show and uh, i just think you're, you're so you're so right just uh that gratitude and support for each other i even noticed you were on a uh one of those happy hour social events and, and it, i think it's just great to get together yeah. for those types of things and encourage people so uh, you're all over it and you, you mentioned the platforms that you're on and some people may think that you have to have all this you know elaborate platforms to to really make a difference and help people you know what are you using now what have you used in the past and maybe where are you going with some of these platforms to create some of this content well as far as creating it most people are surprised that yeah i use a 200 hundred dollar old cell phone and a 15 dollar mic and yeah that's that's the extent of our youtube setup um, it's really hit play on it and try to try to make content that is helpful and also that sounds okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. would be the one thing is watch the sound. Um, you know, most of ours is on YouTube and you know, what I would warn people that are trying to get in this is realize that you don't have to be into everything. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you don't need to do YouTube, Instagram reels, LinkedIn, and all these things Just really find one that, you know, that you are helping someone and that you find rewarding. Yeah, no doubt. And kind of stick in that one. For sure, for sure. Keep it simple to start. I mean, don't feel like you have to make that, you know, five thousand dollar investment out the gate just to get going. But you know, it, 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 you really can start simply uh, and make a big impact impact for people. So. Now, how about the the industry that you're serving? You're, you're working with a lot of manufacturers. What are they saying? Are you getting any fee feedback directly from the manufacturers out there? Well, I think the big thing that I hear from people is that I've instilled confidence. And like you said, I'm I'm hitting basic topics. I'm not hitting, you know, the latest and greatest in, you know, industrial 4.0 or whatever we're talking about. Really, it is those basics. And where a technician before would get to a certain troubleshooting step and say, uh, okay, there's something wrong with the PLC, we need to uh, call somebody in. It's just getting them to that next step where they can look into it and say, hey, oh, wait, I'm following this, this motor here, and I go back and, oh, here is my gate switch. Now let me grab my voltmeter and go look at the gate switch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got you. Now, as this thing has evolved, Tim, you know, you've come a long way. Your, your videos are awesome. What do you see as next? What's coming down the pipeline to, to help others learn and, and, and to keep creating and, and be on that cutting edge to bring this information to, to industry? You know, I know a lot of people say that this is virtual reality and augmented reality and those type of things. But I really feel that we need to get people in front of industry. I believe that is how we're going to inspire the next generation. Mm -hmm. And while this statement, I, I use this statement a lot, and while it's a little off, um, off basis, the day that they close Disneyland because augmented reality and virtual reality can do better, that's when that should be our primary recruiter into our industry. But right now, what I've seen doesn't do it justice. And actually, I will go on a little rabbit trail here about this is, you know, Amber and I, we do a lot of, you know, projects in developing countries. And if you've ever been there and you watch the well go in and then put the pump on it, and the moment they pump those first drops of water and the kids run up and they're trying to get it and, you know, the, all the parents are cheering and you're going to end up crying 
Yeah. And I've been, I've watched this in augmented reality. I've never seen a single person cry. Right, right. It doesn't have that impact that we need to get people into our industry. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in the most awesome time in human history. And the generation that's coming up now, they're, they're looking for more than a big paycheck and a nice benefit package. It's going to take more than that to get them in our industry. Right. And so I think that is us getting people in front of, a, you know, letting them see the machines. Let's, you know, let's stop being these ginormous buildings with no windows in them. But let's let people know what is going on in there. You know, how, you know, we, we, we talk security so much. And I, don't get me wrong, security is important. But we act like we have to keep everything so guarded that nobody actually knows what goes on in those buildings. You know, right. so what I would say is, you know, if you're, you know, if you're a company, I, you know, guard what you need to guard, but also let people see what is available to see, you know, and whether that be a small clip that you put out on LinkedIn, let them see a little bit of your process. That way somebody can be like, oh, well, I didn't even know how that's made or, hey, I never even thought about how that's made mm -hmm. or, you know. Have your employees do a, do a competition of who can do the best Instagram reel on how to prep steel for a weld. I mean, let's start talking and showing what we do. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I even noticed there's some, some manufacturers out there just utilize big glass windows instead of those brick walls and actually showcase some of the equipment, you know, just, just to let actually just get that peek inside there's one on uh interstate north carolina every time i drive by it's a brewery and you can see literally everything you know the whole process you know as you go down the interstate and that's just cool it just it piques yeah. your interest you know okay that's some pretty big equipment and i know they're making beer but it takes all that to make beer so it's it's just it's just another way to connect the dots yes very cool, man. Well, you're so passionate about this, and, and, and this has been so much fun, but we, we call it Eco Ask Why, and it, that's the heart of the show, Tim. You know, so if you were to, add, to answer someone, why should everyone take ownership and really advocating and training others just about this amazing world of manufacturing, what would it be? Well, I believe that anyone that is successful in their trade has an obligation to help raise up the next generation. And... I don't think that means after you have 30 years of experience and your career is winding down. Mm -hmm. We actually helped mentor our first company um, when we were about six months old. And I believe that, you know, if you are a, you know, even starting out in a trade, then you are capable of mentoring a college student. If you're a college student, then you are capable of mentoring a high school student. And then, yeah, if you're a high school student, you're capable of middle and mentoring a middle school student. And yeah, if you're a middle school student, you can, you're capable of mentoring an elementary school student. And, and that's, that's not a far fetched thing. I, I, my kids were just talking about it the other day. They were remembering their elementary school buddy. And so when you come into school here in elementary school, you know, you get a fifth grade buddy and they kind of take you around and show you the school. Well, they remembered that. And six years later or five years, well, however, whenever um, <laughs> their fifth grade term came, they're like, oh, wow, we get to mentor somebody. We get to mentor a kindergartner now. And that's the way, you know, there is, there is that feeling of it. You're going to get so much more back by mentoring someone. And I'll say that, you know, I answer a ton of questions but I learned so much from it. Yeah. You know, somebody has a problem. Well, chances are it's in an industry that I have, I know nothing about. Right. And so I have to kind of think, okay, well, what, how do they do that? And you know, that's so a great learning experience for both of us. Well, man, you're, you're, you're doing great. That mentorship is so important, you know, and Tim, for people who want to, to follow you or learn more about TW controls and maybe want to learn more uh, about uh, industry and automation, where can they go to connect with you? Well, I certainly hope they can Google me now and find me and not find somebody else using my stuff. But uh, yeah, you can Google Tim Wilborn. You can go to twcontrols.com. And yeah, we're, we're on LinkedIn. And yeah, we're real accessible. And 
reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you. Absolutely. And we'll make sure that we link all your, your, uh, your links and connection points in our show notes for our listeners, uh, as, as always. So go there, check out some great ways to get in, in, in touch with Tim. And thank you, Tim, so much. This has been a fun topic. Really enjoyed walking this through. You're doing a phenomenal job. Uh, and just, just hats off to you and your wife for all the work you're doing. Well, thank you so much for having me, Chris. And you're doing a phenomenal job all side. Well, thank you, sir. You have a great day. You too. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S. W-H-Y dot com.